just start with a quick round of introductions. I'll quickly introduce myself, and then all the panelists can introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Pranav, the founder and CEO of Zeno. Um, so when you typically go to a mall uh, and you shop there at the store, they ask you for your phone number. And the moment you give their phone, your phone number to enroll into the loyalty program, after that, you keep getting bombarded with communications we hate receiving on our phone. Um, what we do at Zeno is we enable retailers to understand each and every one of us better as an individual customer so that they can reach out to us with lesser communications, more relevant communications, and communications on channels like Facebook and Instagram where customers would prefer receiving them. And because of this, uh, we're able to enable retailers like Shopstop, Taco Bell, uh, McDonald's, Bestseller Group, Apparel Group, Levi's, Tommy Hilfiger, and many other leading brands uh, grow their repeat sales by double digits. Uh, so that's just a quick introduction from my side. Over to you, Anil. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anil Menon, uh, CIO for Lulu Group. Uh, we largely look into retail, real estate, logistics, hospitality, and flight kitchens. So we work on mo most of this, and uh, largely, yes, known in the market for now, all the expansion plans in India. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nitin, and uh, basically, I run a gift subscription business by the name of Beyond Petals. Uh, though we are a very different service, wherein uh, we take your important occasions and deliver gifts on a specific day, uh, but being Valentine's Day today, if you want to give any requests immediately, I'm ready to accept. We'll deliver it in I like next three to four hours. So once the session is over, lunchtime, give all your secret requests to me. To requests to me, delivery uh, will happen in next three to four hours, and data will remain confidential. So that's what we do. In short. Hello everyone. I'm Benisha. I head marketing with Wowtech. So basically, Wowtech, we are a software as a service uh, provider. And we do a lot of work in terms of bringing in digitization for malls and retail. So right from you know, introducing a loyalty program to doing your indoor wayfinding to actually improving your customer experience, that is what uh, these are the few products that we do. So that's me. Hello, guys. Uh, so I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of retailers here. And if I told you that we provide a platform that can help you display your products better, increase the interaction between your customer and your product, and help you increase your sale. How do you like that? So InSync provides what we call shop, um, smart shop fitting solutions, where our Racks are smart. They're not, they're not static. They're, they have integrated lighting, integrated digital signages, and everything that Zeno and Benisha's platform provides, we can enable them right there on the racks where people spend 74% of their in-store time. So yeah, that's small little things that we do. Thank you so much, everyone, for your introductions. Uh, our discussion for the panel today is optimizing the customer experience, right? And we speak a lot about optimizing the e-commerce customer experience, but today we're going to focus more about the mall customer experience and the in-store customer experience. And for that, we'll start with Anil. Uh, and Anil, it'll be amazing if you can share your perspective on how you approach designing the mall customer experience while balancing revenue maximization at the same time. Sure. Uh, that's, a, that's a very valid uh, and relevant question for this moment of time. Uh, we work on, as I said, we work from retail, we work from mall, right? Uh, the customer experience at both the ends are different or are, dif are at a different scale, right? And from a retail perspective also, you need to also be uh, cognizant of the fact what category are you trying to project and where, where are you? Say for where I'm, where I'm coming from is a grocery uh, customer would be different from an apparel to an white goods, right? Uh, for us, we have all the challenges in, in, in a single, single bucket. 
So what we largely try to do is uh, we keep the principles right, the basic principles right. While there can be customer experience to an X level, um, the market may be at a different trend level, but we always work on the USPs which we want to deliver to the customer, right? Uh, that's, that's a way of keeping the cost in check, right? Uh, because I, I'm, I'm sure all the retailers across will be having different uh, ball games to be played around from, from the point of view. While we do the USP part of it, we make sure that all our uh, thoughts, all our um, innovations are towards that USP. With bringing a bit of innovations to, to, the, to it, by, by bringing in a bit of um, track change, if I have to call in our in our language, to see how the customer behaves to it. So it's more of an experimental ground which we create. And thanks to the clouds and the uh, technologies which are which have been more of plug and play now, uh, it's easier to plug in and plug out uh, for all, all the experiments which you're trying to do. So from a grocery point of view, we may try to make it make sure till now, right? Till now. People may talk over a lot of things, but till now the the core USP for every retailer is how fast your checkout is. How many less gimmicks are you playing there and how much confidence are you giving to your customer at that point of time? From an apparel point of view, I would go with InSync, what they do, right? Uh, all, all, the, all the digital aspects, because that's, as I rightly said, 75% 70, of the time which I spend there, and that's where we bring in the content-driven uh, marketing, if you have to say. Then we have the white goods. That, that's a kiosk, if I have to call because uh, everyone is, is a tech savvy person now. You can't talk about anything which was like, sir, wo copper ka wire hai, tick chal jayega. That's, that's not, not happening. People come, people have more information than you. So it is more how you drive your employees or the sales representative at the ground to give that extra value add. So how do you do that? You pass on the latest of the info informations which are which are there right now on the on the on the web to him. Plus, what's what specific are you trying to push out here, right at the, at the, at the right at the sales end? So if I if someone comes in, for example, if I am at the, at the connect, we call it Lulu Connect, right? Uh, if someone comes in, you say, "Hi, Anil, how are you? You last time you brought in this, how was your experience?" That's the connect which starts, right? That's my sales pitch. It's not, I'm going to sell this product, this product, everyone knows about it, right? They know better than us. So that's some, some aspects which we play around from the grocery, apparel, and white goods point. Thank you so much for those insights, Anil. Um, like you said, it's very important for everybody to focus on their USPs, right? Uh, and as customers, there are certain core things we all care about, like a fast checkout. Uh, for example, today, even at the airport, I used Digi Atra for the first time and probably saved 20 minutes, and I was so excited about that, right? So whether it's an airport or it's a physical store or it's e-commerce, no matter where we are, we want to get done with our shopping faster. We want to get done uh, with getting to the flight faster, right? Um, but on that note, uh, Josefa, we'll get to you, right? Uh, at InSync Hardware, once a customer enters the particular store, uh, you enable the store to create experiences where customers can better understand products and better engage with products to deliver a stronger customer experience. So it'll be amazing if you can walk us through how you empower retailers to do that. Okay, I'll just step back and you know say a couple of, since we all love matrices, um, two things. One, 85% of decisions made in a store are subconscious. So one, let's talk about better visibility of the products that we display. And the reason we integrated lighting into the fixtures is because like we're sitting on the stage right now and you, you know those lights coming at our eyes are hurting our eyes. It's exactly what happens in most stores. And the beauty of it is that when in, in a general retail environment, if you as a shopper go and stand in front of the rack, the lighting from the ceiling is actually behind you and creates like a projector effect. So the better lighting that you put in the store, the deeper shadow or the darker shadow you get on the product when the shopper is actually shopping. 
So what we realized is if you integrate the lights into the shelves, there are no shadows. The lighting is literally 5x more efficient than overhead lighting. So the customer now is not looking at glare in their eyes. They're more comfortable and they're looking at the product for longer. Now, that is a subconscious thing. Nobody is going to come and tell you, oh, the, the light hurting my eyes. Nobody is telling you that. But it's subconscious. So more dwell time at the rack equals to more sales. Now, if there's more dwell time at the rack, and if, for example, Lulu launches a new product, and they're able to have a fashion show, for example, of that product, right there at the rack where those products are kept. Now you're creating a human connection using digital technology right there where the product is. That means we're creating an impulse to buy. Now if we're able to also say that a rack in another part of the store has, product, uh, has a tablet which is enabled with um, their e-commerce platform and Zeno's technology to understand the customer better. Now, what happens then? Let's see the scenario. A person picks up a product from the rack. They scan it on our scanner. The product pops up on that screen. Now, every move that the customer is making from there on, up till even the purchase of the product, which then can be shipped to their home, Zeno's technology is actually capturing that breadcrumb and giving Lulu a better understanding of that product. Now, this is happening because it's right there at the rack. Now, let's think about what Benisha does. And let's go a little further into the store and maybe able to capture a little more information about the product. He's at the end of his journey and we're able to capture, say, feedback about the, the experience or about the new product that was launched in the store. Again, this is done in the path to purchase. The customer is not moving to an external kiosk. He's not moving to any other space in the store. There's a research by PricewaterhouseCooper which says that customers, when they're in the store, are generally looking for, like everybody said, quicker checkouts but they're also looking for more information about the product. 40% of customers, out of 1,000 customers in India, said that they want better product information. Now, by doing all of these things at the rack where the customer is actually shopping, we're able to provide them that. And you think, I'll leave it to all of you all, to decide whether that will improve sales. So this is customer experience 101. You're giving them what they want. You're making the environment more conducive to the way they shop, making the products more visible, and creating a subconscious connection with the customer while they are shopping, increasing their impulse to buy. So that's the customer experience angle that we are trying to provide. Thank you so much uh, for your uh, insights, Josefa. Uh, something very interesting I took away from that is 85% of our decisions in a store are actually subconscious. That means we're not actually thinking about what we're purchasing, right? And only 15% of our mind is consciously deciding what to buy. And how small things like lighting can influence our decisions to make purchases. And small things like lighting can improve our customer experiences. Um, and on top of that, in e-commerce, we can trap every single thing a customer is doing on our website, right? Uh, from the moment they visit the website to which products they check out, to which button they click or don't click, uh, to how much time they spend on each page. And uh, Josefa shared how uh, with technology now, um, their technology can enable us to capture those breadcrumbs in the real world to better understand how customers are truly engaging with our stores and use those insights to build better customer experiences. On that note of technology, uh, Vinisha would love to get your insights 
to understand uh, how retailers can use technology to deliver better in-store experiences. Thanks. Okay. So basically, uh, right now, all of us are actually trying to, you know, target the Gen Z, the millennials, and these set of customers are the never normal customers. So when we say never normal, uh, what we mean is these these are customers who are worried about, you know, having a sustainable brand. They want the brand to stand up for something. They want a brand to have an opinion. So, you know, with retailers having so much to deal with, so many different types of customers, what we do is we create an experience management, uh, you know, platform. Now, earlier, you know, whenever we used to think about an experience management platform, we would restrict ourselves to, you know, capturing feedback or, you know, measuring the net promoter score. But now, uh, you know, the way the world is moving, it has moved much beyond that. So at, at any point in time, what we try to do is you should be able to actually understand what is causing, a, a, you know, either a ha increase in your net promoter score or decrease in your net promoter score. So, you know, just like if I just change the product placement a bit or I improve the lighting a bit, am I getting more people to actually walk in that area to actually notice the product? When, when it comes to, you know, uh, finding a product, so uh, in, in a larger store or say in a larger mall, am I able to find, you know, a shop that I want to go? So say I am new to the city, I just visit the Lulu Mall, am I able to actually find out the store that I want to go to? So something as simple as doing an indoor wayfinding. I have an app on my mobile or I have a QR code that I scan and I'm able to say, okay, I am at the entrance, please take me to the nearest, you know, uh, sunglass hut. So that is, that is what, you know, uh, actually customer experience means. Thank you so much for those insights, Vanisha. Yes, and I think part of customer experience is making a customer's job easier. And especially when we go to some of the largest malls in this country, or you go to some really large malls in Dubai, you get lost inside those malls, and you do need indoor wayfinding to figure out where the store you want to go to is, right? But of course, in these discussions, we start speaking a lot about technology, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, delivering a great customer experience is about delivering really strong customer insight. Uh, Nitin would love to get your perspective, you know, uh, since you're so involved with gifting, to share uh, how you use gifting and your insights from gifting can help retailers create more customer delight, especially for their most loyal customers. Right. So as I uh, as I was talking earlier, our business is uh, uh, more humane than a technology-driven kind of a business. Uh, because in our business, which I do, uh, the, the gifting bit of it, uh, basically we run engagement programs, as uh, Pranav has rightly said, uh, we run engagement programs for your loyal customers, your value customers, which may be bringing your top line business to, to your organization. So we basically run uh, engagement programs for those people. Now, when you talk about, uh, like, we run programs for companies like Range Rover uh, uh, and, uh, and top-end uh, luxury cars, means ju just, to, just to give you example, uh, a few examples, uh, uh, we run programs for uh, uh, premier banking clients. Now, when we talk about these are so high net worth individuals that what can be done for them is always a big question. So basically, we run... Uh, emotional connect programs for these people, wherein company companies are trying to establish some kind of an emotional uh, bond with these high-value customers. So that is what we primarily engage into. That is what our uh, our core business is all about: uh, creating customer experience, which with with such clients is always difficult because they have seen everything, which is primarily there to see for them. So what, as I was talking earlier, that instant gratification is something which, which, we, uh, which we bring on the table, uh, because that is something which, uh, uh, on, on which a lot of big companies like Amazon is also, and, and our current uh, new age businesses 
like Zepto and all the other players are doing a lot of good customer experiences wherein you are getting things in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, hours time, or maximum in a day, which is 24 hours. That's what Amazon does. So uh, basically, we are also into something called uh, instant gratification, wherein your deliveries can happen in blink of an eye. You will, you can give me the data, uh, the location, the address, the message, and delivery will happen pan India anywhere or even across the globe in like three to four four hours time. So that's what the another angle of the customer experience which we create for our top uh, top top end clients. Uh, then what what has given the maximum returns to us in our business uh, is resolving customer conflicts. So when you talk about customer experiences, resolving now you any business which is around service will have conflicts. Now percentage can be one to two percent, can go up to five percent, but not beyond that. So in our business, it is largely in between one to two percent. So when you talk about resolving a conflict in my business, basically the theme is very simple. We either get a re-delivery done or we make it complimentary for the client. So there's no discussion which happens around because these are all high value customers. We don't create any kind of a conflict with the customer that what you're saying is right or wrong. What we assume is that you're right and what we can compensate you as maybe with a second delivery, which optional delivery, which will happen the same day, or we'll make the delivery which has happened to you as complimentary. Now that is 2% of my business, that is 2% of the revenue loss, but then these people become your loyal customers, these people, because this creates such a great customer experience for the client. So why I'm bringing this on the table, because if you are in such kind of a servicing business, uh, this is a takeaway which you can uh, take with you. I have, I'm working with more than 100 cli clients currently, B2B I'm talking about. And wherein this has been extremely appreciated by everybody, wherein that, that's the one of the key tool why we are retaining so many clients for more than 10 years now. So uh, that is what I would like to add and sum up as that uh, my business runs primarily on emotions wherein a lot of human touch and human uh, element is involved. And when there is human touch and human element, there is a possibility of error. Now, how to resolve that possibility of error, that is what I have anyways explained. Now, coming back to the original thing, which I, the first thing which I said, uh, in 15 minutes time, I am available outside to take your request for Valentine's gift. So that's what, from my side, I'm giving it back to the Prana. Yes. Thank you so much. I think uh, I'm going to take your uh, help for a Valentine's Day gift. Uh, but I think customer delight, of course, is done the best by the luxury industry where we have the highest paying customers, right? And for an average retailer, a typical customer would just make one transaction, spend two, three, four thousand rupees with us. But then we have our top one or two percent customers that could be spending 50,000 rupees, one lakh rupees a year from us and we could use Nitin's insights to deliver a stronger customer experience for those customers, right? Now, as I spoke about, we keep talking about technology, so we're gonna quickly come back to technology again. Uh, Anil, you've been at the forefront of deploying technology, whether it's loyalty programs, creating the Lulu Connect program that you just spoke about. So what would be your biggest pain point that you're looking to solve in the next three years uh, from a technology standpoint to deliver a better customer experience? Just a small correction there. Three years is too far. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen next day, right? So uh, today, if you look at it, most of the retailers or mall owners, what they try to do is what runs for next couple of months, right? It can't be like old times we, we spoke about, okay, well, give me a five-year strategy plan, three-year strategy plan. 18 months, max to max, yeah, 24 months if, if I have to go by. Uh, so. And see, the lo world loyalty is now very, uh, very uh, feeble, if I, if I have to call it right now. Uh, that's nothing called as loyalty per se. It's more how much, how much can you connect to that particular individual or the particular shopper or the particular customer. That drives business. And with, uh, rightly said, emotions being a part and AI being on the other side of the coin, uh, it's, it's, it's a challenging phase, right? It's a very thin line, where do you want to cross and be there? 
because as AI builds in, your personalization builds in. When personalization builds in, you may cross some boundaries. So as retailers, as uh, owners of malls and others, uh, we make sure that we draw a line where do we do we keep personalization. So that was sometime a word called hyper personalization and so on and so forth. Uh, not getting there. Uh, what we try to do is, uh, whatever we have right now in, uh, with us, we try to make most out of it using AI as a technology, running some core business uh, logics on, onto that. And also uh, with WoW and others with us, we also try to understand how the mall is doing in terms of the sales pattern and everything. And we also give this, that's a, that's a whole collaboration which has been created because of this two years of pandemic, where there no, there's no more competition per se. It's more of a you leave, I leave, and we leave together kind of thing, right? Uh, so that aspect is highly uh, uh, pushed across the organization in terms of from a mall owner to a retailer, retailer to the supplier, supplier to the delivery partners, so and so forth. So this aspect is something which we will want to drive for some more time. Uh, and uh, to top it all, to just sum the whole the what I spoke about, I think AI is something which is driving a lot of data crunching which is happening and data classification also is happening at the same time. I yeah, know AI is definitely playing a big role in everything every company in the world is doing, right? Uh, in fact, with the release of Chat GPT and its integration with Bing, uh, even Google, which is a $2 trillion company, is worried about disruption to their core business. So uh, like you spoke about, three years is a long time. In a few months, uh, the advent of AI and how every person sitting here should be thinking about AI has completely changed since the launch of Chat GPT, right? So I'd like to hand it over to the panel. Um, and if anybody would like to share their insights on how retailers can use artificial intelligence and new learnings from how language learning models can now be used by retailers to deliver stronger customer experiences. So, you know, like we were talking about AI. So the problem right now that we face is there is a lot of data and the information overload that we all are facing. So I'll just give you a simple example. We take a small feedback form. Everybody writes in, thousands of people write in paragraphs of whatever they are feeling and thinking, right? Uh, what if, you know, you could just look at a word cloud or just look at the overall sentiment in a minute? Now that is, that is something that will bring your experience, you know, make it top notch because you are not spending that effort. Now, what we relate AI to is bringing the smartness in but keeping the human aspect of it. So that is what, you know, AI means to us as a technology company, wherein, you know, we have AI powering in more efficiency, more operational efficiency, but again, we are not losing focus on the core customer strategy. So that is what it means to us as a company. Um, I think I'm going to step back and, and again talk about customer experience within, currently within the retail store environment, right? Now, <clears throat> if we look at why, why does a customer really come into the store? when you can buy online. And there are, there are certain experiences that drive customers into the store. So let's just simplify the, the whole complex web of n lots and lots of data and lots and lots of technology and, and come back to the core ki, yaar, humare yaar customer aata kyo hai? And physical store, what is the strength of the physical store, right? And how do we really play on the strengths of the physical store. If anyone here is, is, has subscribed to the Clifton Strengths philosophy, which says that you enhance your strengths rather than working on your weaknesses, and you'll gain much faster than if you try to uh, you know, capture your weaknesses. So let's focus on the strengths. Our strengths are, as physical retailers, we've got products. People can touch and feel them. People can see them, try them, and take decisions there. 
So, I mean, if, if we look at the sum of everything that we do, we're trying to attract people into the store, and we're trying to seduce them to buy. I mean, that's essentially the core of what retailers are doing. So, if, if today seduction is about knowledge, learning, knowing, or connecting to a specific sort of ideology, then that's an experience, right? If knowing uh, what material is used or whether it is sourced in a sustainable manner, then that's an experience. If connecting to a designer, so if, for example, you're buying something from a Manish Malhotra, and if you can actually hear a Manish Malhotra talk about his design that is there, that's an experience. If we can help people buy faster, like in a supermarket, like Anilji said very poignantly, that in a supermarket, it's all about efficiency. How easy we can make it to find a product or find a department, to how easy we can make it to just check out. I think that's an experience. And all the technology that all of us are trying to put together works towards only that one mean. How do you increase sales throughput? How do you reduce operational cost? And how do you manage inventory or uh, increase the turnaround of the inventory in the store? How do you make the store more efficient? And while doing all of this, how are you increasing your customer experience? Thank you so much uh, for your insights, Josefa. I think um, at the core of customer experience, right, is customer understanding. With everything that we do at Zeno, whenever I speak to a CEO, they're like, everything that you do is great. We're getting a lot of value. But tell me, how can I better understand my customer, right? And no matter how much you understand your customer, it is never enough. And every business is unique. So the way AI is changing, one of the things it in enables is instead of seeing a standardized bunch of reports and asking the same standardized bunch of questions which we keep asking from data, AI will enable us to ask questions that are specific to our business and get answers that we were never able to get before. And that's going to mean we'll be able to understand our customers better than ever before. And we'll be able to use that information across our entire business, including building a better customer experience, right? So before we hand it over to the audience, one final question, right? Uh, Again, I'd like to hand it over to everybody. Are there any specific challenges that retailers are specifically facing that you'd love to talk about? The only retailer looks like. Uh, yeah, it is twofold. One is skill set. You can run the best of the AIs. You can do best of whatever you can do. But if it is not consumed by your ground force, I think it's of no use, right? Second, the levels of collaboration which we run across, across and also the legacy systems which we carry, right? Uh, while you may have the best of the technologies on the top, but your legacy systems are still pulling it down because it's invested. You can't go to your uh, investor and say that, you know what, just move this out, we are losing so-and-so, and put a new one. No, that's not happening. So the phase manner approach of moving out your legacy is one, and skill sets is something which is larger challenge for us. Uh, no, thank you so much uh, for sharing that, Anil. Yes, I think every business ultimately comes down to people, right? Uh, would love to hand it over to the audience uh, for any questions you may have. My name, my name is Atharva, and my question is question to the panel is. How can retailers ensure that their customer experience is consistent across all the channels and the touch points? See, the, the word consistent moves the goal every three months, if I have to call it. Because today, what is consistency? I, as I said, my checkout being on time, my uh, content being on time, my, custom, my salesperson knowing what, what is speaking about the product is one consistency. But is that the expectances of the, of the customer? I don't think so. It's moving. It's, it's a moving goalpost. So a consistency with the core three pillars need to be there. That is 
the bare minimum retail basics. But on top of that, you have to move with your customer. You can't be saying that this is my consistent experience which I'm giving, which no more tomorrow is not relevant for the customer. So the word consistency has its own definitions when you, when you talk about it. From a retailer point of view is what I'm, what I'm speaking about. But that's, that's where we stand. Because tomorrow, InSync may come up with something good, and that's what customer is trying to ex get an experience in my store. And that's need to be consistent across the channels. But I may, know, may or may not have it. So that's, that's something which I, I think uh, is a key differentiator. Yeah, Ashish here, here again. Um, Indians are known to be more value loyal than brand loyal. Uh, so, how does the brands run their loyalty programs and if you could, you know, specify which loyalty programs in retail industry have run successfully, what has worked and what should be key ingredients of a loyalty program to retain experience, I mean, good experience to the customer? Uh, now, sir, actually a very well asked question. Uh, we run a uh, couple of, I would not say loyalty programs, we run a lot of engagement programs, I would say. I would uh, put it in that way for a uh, lot of companies, even for large pharma companies like uh, Cipla, Glen Glenmark, Alchem. Uh, I talked about automobiles. We work with premier banking clients. Now, uh, as I said, uh, at top of the value chain, uh, basically, it is about engaging them. When I design a program, it is basically about engaging them four or five times in a year, wherein you are reaching out to them physically. If you are sending them just a WhatsApp message or just an emailer, I'm talking about top of the line customers. I, I'm not denying that that is not important. Even for your regular customers, a discount voucher at a store, H&M store or a shopper stop store is also uh, prevalent and important. I also take mileage of that whenever in my birthday months and all these uh, occasions. But I'm here I'm talking about a value customer which is top of the line customer. So there it is about creating an engagement program where we are touch basing these people four or five times in a year depending one on generic occasions. When I say generic it is like Diwali, New Year's and all these occasions. Specific occasions which is collecting data. We, are, we have talked about technology which help us collecting data. Now, utilization of that, that data, wherein we are reaching out to them on their anniversaries and birthdays with a certain tangible physical gift, which is going just with best compliments. It has nothing, uh, expecting nothing in return from them. It is like creating a customer for a lifetime. When I was doing a campaign for Toyota, uh, they were talking about creating a, uh, create a campaign uh, which can retain the customer for the lifetime. Today, he's buying one car, tomorrow he, sh he should buy second, third of the same brand. So basically, here I'm not expecting anything from him in return immediately. It is about creating a long-term uh, goal with setting a long-term goal or long-term agenda with the client. Now, then if my data points are also helping us to collect hobbies and interests. This will, so somebody likes reading specific, I have specific reading interests also, or somebody likes going to spa or holidaying or movies or watching cricket. These things can also be aligned from these engagement programs which we run. But these, as I said, these are primarily for top 10% or 5% of your customer base. Then regular is the discounting program which you run in bulk for uh, your large uh, group of customer where you are offering discounts, giving free vouchers and all. Sending emailers and messaging is what you commonly do with everybody. And on birthdays and anniversaries, that has still not started by all the clients. So even a WhatsApp message or an emailer doesn't come from a lot of companies to you wishing you on your birthday or anniversary. So all these things needs to be done in case we have to ring, face, ring fence our customers by creating an emotional bond just besides giving them freebies in form of discounts, 5%, 10% or something like that. This is just, if I just can add to that, uh, very well relevantly said. Uh, loyal, world loyalty is moving out, so let's not... It's, it moved to personalization, right? It's, it's just an instrument for to get connected with your customer. 
the instrument has one, which is points again. We've been, as you rightly said, Indians, we need to know that points. It's also more about value adds which is coming up. There's no more just points or just saying that, hey, you know what, it's knowing the customer. So as, as Ashish walks in, uh, so I used to work with Starbucks. So when you walk in and I know, hey Ashish, how are you? Uh, your, your coffee was so and so and so. That, took, that sense of understanding, that's, that's the connect which I'm trying to form a loyalty program, right? Uh, today loyalty programs are just mere connect uh, kiosk or connect objects for our instruments to connect. That's more like it. I think plus one to what Anil said. Um, I was going to say loyalty programs today are just a data collection mechanism to super simplify it, right? You give people loyalty points so that they give you your phone number and their email ID so that you can start tracking their behavior and you can use that information to start tracking their customer behavior and then deliver more relevant communication to them, then build better customer experiences for them. So the loyalty program in itself is just a starting point and probably just the first 10% of what it means to deliver a great customer experience today.